Hey there everybody, what's up? WandaVision, that's what's up. Episode 5 to be more precise. Now, I have gone on record saying that last week's episode, episode 4 to be precise, was my least favorite of the season. I still think so. However, the way they connect the previous episode to this episode, I thought was handled very well. I still wish we didn't get that episode as early as we did. I would have been... I would have... Personally, for me, I would have preferred uh, if that episode where they revealed everything would have been at the, the, the season finale. But I get it. I understand structurally why they, they needed to. They felt the need to have that the, the big explain o vision episode be yesterday's episode. And the way, like I said, the way they tied it into this episode. While I would have liked and preferred this episode, episode five, uh, to be. Um, a standalone, you know, a decade uh, of a sitcom, this time being the 80s. I would have preferred that to be the case for this episode. I get why they didn't do that, and I respect the decision that, that, that Marvel had in structuring the, se the season. And uh, I still really enjoyed both episodes, just I, I felt the connectivity of it was a little unnecessary. However, that's that aside, let's talk about the episode itself. I really like it. I definitely enjoyed this episode more than the previous one. One of my favorite episodes of the season so far. Uh, if I had to rank them... I don't know. De definitely, like I said, episode 4 would be my least favorite. But this one would... Out of the 5, because there are only five, there's only 5 episodes, so... If I were to do a top 5, this episode might be my... second or third favorite episode. I really, I really enjoyed the episode. Let's break it down. Uh, we're going back to the 80s, but this time it's happening. Everything is happening in the sitcom itself. It's happening in concurrent with uh, the outside world, and uh, we get to learn uh, more new stuff on both uh, sides of the spectrum. There. So uh, going back to the, to the regular world, uh, Monica Rambeau is awake. She's out of the uh, uh, the WandaVision Westview View uh, world. Uh, she's back to her regular self. Her clothes, as we've seen in this episode, had kind of metamorphosized. This is deceased. I don't know what the proper term is, but they ha they went through metamorphosis into like 70s clothes, but they're still the same clothes that they were when she entered um, the field. Uh, like she said, 70% Kevlar. So they're still bulletproof clothes, they just don't really look the part. And that, that's a really interesting thing that uh, they kind of touched on in this episode that Wanda kind of has this ability to um, reshape matter in her own unique way, which I think is incredible, and they basically they touch on a lot of the different points that people have been saying outside of, uh, you know, uh, the movie universe. Like, people have, I have heard lots of people say over and over and over again that Wanda is arguably the strongest character in the MCU, uh, the strongest human character, I should say, the strongest in the Avengers, because she almost took out Thanos by herself. Twice, as a matter of fact. Well, maybe the first time she didn't actually try to take him out, she was just blocking him out. In Endgame, she almost took him out by, by herself, and then obviously he ordered the uh, orbital bombardment from the sky. And uh, then obviously, uh, uh, Randall, Randall Park's character re references uh, Captain Marvel. We see a little something there with Monica Rambeau. She changes kind of the way she looks. Uh, I have heard people say that she doesn't, she doesn't like Captain Marvel anymore. But however, after seeing this, I doubt it. I think there's something else to the story. Like, maybe she misses Captain Marvel. Maybe she doesn't like Captain Marvel. Maybe she just blames Captain Marvel for something that happened with her mom. Maybe she blames her for not being there for her mom when she died. Or something like that. I don't know. Maybe she just blames her for never coming back to visit her after the whole business with the scrolls. I don't know what's happening with uh, Captain Marvel and Monica Rambeau. I'm not going to uh, stay too much on the, on the subject. Uh, it was great seeing her working together with Randall Park and uh, Darcy. Uh, I, I would have enjoyed if um, the Monica Rambeau, Darcy, and uh, Jimmy Woo, I accidentally called him Henry Woo last week, week. Uh, I definitely am not making that mistake again. I would have enjoyed seeing like a s sort of subplot where they're kind of trying to save Wanda on their own behind... Uh, the director's back without him even knowing about it. I would have enjoyed that uh, subplot. It's still might, um, it's still possible. It might happen. 
just didn't exactly want to, you know, we got to see that. I mean, they were kind of uh, up to something in this episode, but they, when they decided to go with it, they uh, obviously turned to um, uh, the director and asked him for help. So, uh, yeah, we still might see uh, them kind of breaking off and doing their own thing, trying to save Wanda on, the, on their own, but going back to Wanda, she, apparently she can come out in and out of the, uh, the universe that she may be created, maybe she's controlling it. I'm still not gonna say that she's controlling the entire thing. I don't know if she can, she uh, uh, created it. She says in the episode she doesn't actually know exactly how this happened. I definitely would believe that. I think maybe she had something to do with it. I just don't necessarily think she's the reason everything in Westview is happening the way that it does. She definitely, she definitely has a her hand in it, I'm just not sure she's the creator of it. I, I, I definitely keep, uh, they keep pushing uh, Agnes's uh, husband, Ralph, which she keeps mentioning in, even in this episode. I think he's behind this. I've seen rumors and theories that he's Mephisto, that, or he's Dormammu. I don't know who he could be. I'm just, I, I'm going to be happy. Maybe, for all I know, he could be Nightmare. Because, again, this whole thing ties directly into um, Doctor Strange and the, uh, the Multiverse of Madness. So... Dormammu, Mephisto, and Nightmare are all options that make a lot of sense. So, I'm still not going to make my decision on who I think definitively Ralph is. I'm just going to keep watching the show until uh, either I'll get something more definitive or they just uh, straight up reveal it. In any case, you see the twins. I'm not so sure what is happening with the twins there. They can age themselves up at will. I'm not sure how that happens. I'm not sure how they... Are they aware that they're inside a TV universe? Uh, are, so apparently, according to Monica, they are now sentient human beings created by Wanda. So apparently, maybe they're real. Maybe they can come out of the, the TV world uh, at, uh, also the, the same way as Wanda. I mean, in the comics, they both get superpowers. One of them gets super speed. The other one basically becomes uh, a young sort of, kind of, sort of, Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange uh, in, in terms of powers, so maybe he's the one doing this, maybe he's the one aging them up, or I don't know, maybe it was just a collective thing that, that they can do as twins. I don't know what, what is happening with that. We see that Wanda, Wanda's magic cannot affect the twins. Same thing that happened a couple of episodes ago with the Stork. She couldn't do anything to the Stork. She can't do anything to the twins. She, she tried putting pull, them to sleep, and she tries, you know, to convince them to do stuff with her magic, her magic doesn't work on her kids. So again, this all leads back to what I uh, I said before. I do not think Wanda is controlling this universe, at least not entirely. Maybe she has some form of control. And remember, uh, Norm, I believe the name is uh, of the guy who works with Vision. He says that she's controlling him against his will. He said she. He didn't actually give out her a name. He didn't sp explicitly say Wanda. For all we know, it could be Agnes. For all we know, it could be that blonde woman who showed up in episode 2 and never came, and never came back. Who knows? Maybe it's actually her. I don't know. Definitely, it's a she. All we know is it's, it's a she. Uh, it is a she. And uh, we don't necessarily know who it is. At least that's the way I, I see it. And obviously, if right from the start, the characters of Westview are starting to catch on that everything, uh, of everything that's happening. I mean, like, like they, know, they are starting to catch on the fact that they know that they're in a, inside a TV show, they know that something is happening, we see the mailman saying, oh, your mom wouldn't let anything happen to the dog. So he basically he knows more than he's saying, just like all the other characters in Westview so far. And obviously Vision, Vision is starting to clue in on the whole situation. Who the hell knows what is going to happen next? Uh, I'm really enjoying the show. Sorry that I'm just really, really, really uh, rushing through it because there's so much to talk about in this episode. I want to make sure that I don't go too long with this episode. I, I want to make keep it as l as long as maybe 12 minutes. But uh, yeah, we gotta talk about the end reveal, which was just crazy. It blew us all away. I mean, we kind of knew it was coming. Obviously, Marvel sort of confirmed it with all the trailers and clips, which I didn't watch, of course, because I didn't want to get spoiled. But still. Evan Peters is back as Pietro Maximoff. Probably not the Pietro Ma Maximoff we were expecting. It's not Aaron Taylor Johnson's Pietro Maximoff from Age of Ultron. It's Evan Peters 
a Peter Maximoff from the X-Men movies. How does this work? He even has the same color of hair. Because if you notice, um, uh, the Quicksilver in the Avengers movies and the Quicksilver in the X-Men movies have a different type of hair color and hairstyle. So, sort of, it's a mixture of both. He, I mean, it's Evan Peters as the Aaron Taylor Johnson Quicksilver. He's got the hairstyle of the of um, the Avengers uh, movies version, but the hair color of the X Men movie version. It, it is just crazy. I can't wait to see what they could come up with in the next episode. But uh, yeah, I'm loving the show so far. Again, like I said, last episode not my favorite. Still really enjoyed it, but. That's basically my quick thoughts on this episode. Uh, that's all I can really talk about uh, in such a short span of time because I, I, really, I really can go for a full hour talking about just this episode alone. But uh, I'm not going to do that because that will just make this, this whole video just uh, pointlessly long. Uh, it's the same as uh, drawing any attention to this new uh, camel plushie that I am not going to have sitting on, on my uh, couch for the net for. Uh, However long I'll, I'll, I'll decide to keep him there. So uh, yeah, this is everything I have to do. I have to say about this episode. What did you guys think about this episode? Let me know in the comments below, and uh, I will see you guys next episode. Hopefully, with just as much craziness happening. Also, by the way, quick quick note: uh, the first episode of this season, I actually recorded myself watching it this time, and I will also release my live reaction to this episode uh, a couple of minutes after I'm done with this review. So. Uh, Thank you for watching this review, and uh, I'll see you guys next week to talk about the next week's episode. Until the, until ne next time, everybody. Wonder Vision. Hello again, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video, cause I really enjoyed making it. So, if you like what you've seen here, please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content like this. So, until next time, guys. I'll see you guys next time.